coming up. No, there's none today. There are none? All right. No, none today and tomorrow. It's Saturday. Saturday. <clears throat> so tomorrow we have ice cream. Tomorrow we wow. have ice cream. I like that. Ice cream Sunday. Yes. Are we still planning to be off bottom at 12.30? That's correct, yeah, 12.30, okay. and then okay. at the surface um, by 1,400 or so. It's okay. Lobster. Thanks, Amanda. What is that floaty yeah. thingy? Where? Oh. Ooh. Uh, I love how we have really sophisticated language for <laughs> floaty thingies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's not here. Okay. <coughs> yeah, no worries. And for everyone tuning in, we are now on watch change. Um, you guys have been awesome. Stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to visit uh, nautiluslive.org or nautil.gov. Uh, this region, for those of you who have just joined us, this region has been nominated to potentially become a national marine sanctuary. So all the work that we're doing, all the data that we're collecting will help inform this process. Um, but your questions and your comments are just as important. So go ahead and visit um, our website and nautil.gov uh, for more information. Also, if you have missed our previous dives, we have amazing highlights that are uploaded on our website. Um, so check it out. We'll be posting more highlights in the week to come. So stay tuned. 8 to 12, signing out. We got... Um, Hey, Dwight, are you on the comms yet? Front row, back row. Hey, guys, uh, give us a minute up, up here. Sure thing. Um. Okay, let's see, Nav. Uh, what is our estimated time to surface if we were to start recovery? Um, at 20 meters per second, it'd be about 90 minutes. Okay, so we have a we have a half an hour to get back get a 
moving towards that next waypoint. Um, well, actually, in instead of moving to the next waypoint, if you could get the vehicles on the top of that mound, like inside that circle, you know what I mean? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. And we'll take a look around, explore for another half hour, 45 minutes. Um, see if we want to collect anything before we start recover, start ascending. Yeah. Um, what have we already collected in terms of, yeah, samples? Uh, yeah. One second. Take your time. Take your time. If y'all are ready, I'll get the ship moving. Yeah, we're good here. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, if you guys want to come up and just take a look around and zoom on some corals while we're waiting. Yep. Just getting the gauges sorted here. So, yeah, so some samples we have. We have um, some eDNA samples. Okay. Um, we have the Chrysogorgia that we had collected um, at the end of our watch. We have some more coral. What bamboo. Types of coral? Um, I'm gonna think it's, this, it's like a paragorgia, I believe that's what that says. Okay. <clears throat> we got some bamboo coral, more bamboo coral. Okay. What heading are we going on? 110. Um, All right, Sarah, 110 degrees. I think that says tunicate. Okay, yeah. Um, then we have a, it looks like a whalebone fossil. Interesting. Hmm. Very. Where do you see that? Um, on what they collected. A is empty. Oh, nice. Uh, yes, A is empty. Huh. No slurps. Yeah, the slurps. Uh, no, the slurps got clogged. Yeah. Um, there's a possible slurp in there. It's poss possible sponge. Possible, yeah. Um, and one, only one Niskin? Yes. Yeah, this dive has been kind of sparse, so I guess. I guess so. No yeah, one has really. Sadly. I know they took a Niskin last shift, last watch, but yeah. Yeah, that's it's about been tough. We should grab the background uh, before we recover. Um, and then oh, the some only of the stuff look like, looks like it's been eaten. Yeah, they all look dead. <laughs> and then we got about one, two, three, four rocks. Okay. Cool, great. So I think we're probably good on rocks. In terms of bio, I mean, they probably got everything. Cause like I said, like on our watch especially, there was like really nothing. Um, and I mean, from what I saw, it looked like there was just a lot of bamboo, um, some chrysogorgids, but. So you didn't do any many collections last night? No. On your watch? We no, we only <laughs> did the the wow. sponge. That's that why you made up such good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it was like a whole lot nothing. of nothing. Um, just sand and rocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right after those little <laughs> steep sections, there were just long flat sections. Yeah, pretty much. And um, even on the steeper areas, there was really nothing that huh. we could see. That's too bad. Yeah. I mean, there's. But we're learning about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. There was likely smaller things. We saw a lot of like tunicates and like the still cam when we kind of zoomed in on things, but um, yeah. in terms of big stuff, no. Ooh, yeah. falling over coral. We had some good conversations though last night. Yeah, it was like a lot of good conversations. <laughs> it's always important. Yeah. yeah. So the yeah. shallowest depth at the top of this thing should be 1821. Or. Well, uh, we're at 1807. Yeah, now. that's interesting. We're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if our multi-beam data is a little off. Ooh, a mushroom coral. Uh, that's wrong. Some more Magnus Spiralis, I believe. Eritogorgia Magnus Spiralis. 
Want to zoom? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead, video. I like the spirally kind. <laughs> yeah. They're fun. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Ooh, I'm looking right down the, um, right down the spiral, too. Fun. One brittle star, that's about it. Oh, yeah. All right, thanks. Thank okay, full wide, please. I always love how animated those curly corals look. It's like a neat little spiral going through the ocean. Yeah, they're really pretty. Ooh. Hmm, what's that there? Um, another one. Cheyenne, it's you like said 90 minutes to the surface, right? At 20? Potentially. Um, yes, it should be 90 minutes at 20. Um, um, for 17, like as an average, it'll be about an hour and 45 minutes. Go ahead okay. and zoom. Um, a little fish in the background. Kind of, I kind of, it's difficult to tell the difference between Aritagorgia bella and Aritagorgia magnus spiralis from what I can see, but I think this one's still magnus spiralis. Given that the the branches are kind of was the, does the niskin that they collect was that around a coral aggregation or was um, that a background? It just says medium Great diversity. Zoom. Thank you. But I can go and see. Okay, full wide. They added more detail or not? Uh, yeah, I would just um, uh, Paragorgia, Endogorgia. Okay. Multiple disease. All right, so we'll get the background. Yeah, blue corals, crinoids. Pretty sure those are just yeah. both Magnus spiralis based on the uh, branch yeah. lengths, but that could be that could be wrong. But definitely in a, a Chrysogorgia, a Ritagorgia. Just pan around to the right. Look like a bunch of dead stalks. Ooh, and we have a fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, got spooked. Yeah, so not sure why we're seeing so many dead skeletons. Um, obviously, they could be old, but kind of kind of pressed for life here. <laughs> pressed yeah. for big life. Kind of a graveyard, huh? Yeah. Maybe let's go and look at these. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Is there a lifespan for these corals, do we know? Um, from what I can remember, they can be like hundreds of years. Um, deep sea corals are super slow growing, so when they're really big, that's how you know that they're quite old. Um, I think like, I want to say millimeters a year. This that looks like a a live one. Oh. What did I do? Uh oh. <laughs> um. Uh, there we go. Oh yeah. Okay, that's got it's some live polyps on it. Bamboo. You want to do zoom? Sure. Why not? Go ahead, video. A lot of stuff on there. I'll just go up along it. Ooh. Yeah, a lot oh. of... Oh. It got scared and fell off. Yeah. A uh -oh. lot of basket Two stars. of them. Yeah. Oh. And there's... That kind of center has something on it. Yeah, it looks like a squat lobster. N not even that. Just kind of um, the center, like, here. Kind of looks like it has, like, some something else growing on it. But it's very difficult to see. It that's almost that's my like full zoom. Yeah. yeah, it almost looks like there's like a haze. Um, I look like a spider. <laughs> yeah, like it looks oh like yeah, definitely yeah, a squat lobster, or at least a dead 
one? I don't know. Nope, nope, that's alive. alive. That's it's alive. Moving. Yeah. Huh. Oh, wow. That's definitely a thief for that. Um, oh, yeah. Industry. The stringy. Uh, <laughs> I don't even remember when that was. Like an hour ago. Two hours ago, possibly. What was the name? Uh, Serianthoria. Oh. All right. Oh. I'm going to draw it, too, because I feel like <laughs> Go for it. Uh, loyal Urchin? subject. Here Another you. urchin. Looks like it. Loyal subject. I haven't seen these sponges in a while. Yeah. Haven't we seen any sponges? Is it more difficult for sponges to settle in an area with current, or? I don't um, think so. I think they like think? current too. They do like current. Um. Yeah, I don't really have an answer for that one. I'm not sure. Um, you know, just like we're seeing some coral species and not others right, here. Right, right. Um, the same is true for sponges. And honestly, like, there's a lot that we can't see when we're just going by. That's like, true. I'm sure if we zoomed in on, like, one specific area, like... We could spend all day, like, We would find a lot. Yeah. So, who knows? There could be sponges, just not, like, larger ones that we'd be able to see. Right. But I love when we zoom in and spend like five minutes looking at everything on a rock. It's also really hard to see Stoloniferans if you don't zoom. And I love Stoloniferans. Bridge now. Speaking of which, Robert, are we a little high off the deck meters. here? Yeah. Zero eight five. Yeah. Bit. Gorgia. Oh, can we zoom, please? Sherry, back up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Yeah, that looked like Chrysogorgia, maybe okay. Janiculata. And I don't know what the yellow is. That kind of looks like, um, like Primnoid branching. But I've never seen a yellow Primnoid. It might uh, be covered with zoanthids. I think that's... Uh, but the skeleton looks, like looks yellow. Or is that zoanthids? I think it's zoanthids. I think it's all zoanthid. But, well, I don't know. Because it 
down at the bottom of it, there's like a... The holdfast is white. Oh, can we use... Okay, I think it's bamboo, but can we zoom on this area right here? Yeah, because I can see the uh, the protein bands there. Oh, it looks like there's also some uh, barnacles. Neat. I think it is a dead bamboo covered in zoanthids. And hydroids. And, and hydroids barnacles. and barnacles, barnacles and crinoids and a few roads. Well, it's a lot. And who knows what else. But it does seem interesting how they've coated the whole. Right. Skeleton. I feel like I've noticed that on others. But you can tell here, like, that's not the same color. Yeah. And, like, this still looks living. And the whole fast is lighter. And bamboos don't usually, like, look that vibrant. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're good on this. Okay. Thank you. You can add a. Uh, anemone to the list of things on it. Ooh, what was that? Oh, I think my Uber Eats was delivered. <laughs> <laughs> By a helicopter? <laughs> I think they Bridge, no. shot it out of a count cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Where was the cannon <laughs> position? We can add uh, three zero Hawaii? meters to the stepped uh, area. Yep. Yep. Palmyra. We're going to shoot you out of a cannon mm. into the water. Great. I want to go swimming. I do too. Did you order burgers? from? Uh, Please tell me you ordered burgers. <laughs> I want a Big Mac. Oh. <laughs> me too. Great viewing at Atlanta, Cam. Yeah, that's really cool. Take a picture of that. Highlight. I have a uh, mm -hmm. perk here on the sonar, just on the 20 meter ring. Oh, uh, yeah. TJ's watch is just one highlight reel <laughs> all the way through. Can I take a selfie with you? Awesome. Sorry, Annie. <laughs> no, you're fine. Do you want to take one from your end? <laughs> okay. Paula, look this way. Oh, we're doing it again? Yeah. Okay, lovely. Oh, uh, question. Are all corals related? And if so, can they crossbreed? Um, they are all cnidarians. Um, they are all related in some way because they all belong to that order, question mark. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Order. Why am I questioning myself? Phylum. Phylum? Phylum? <laughs> I think so. Anyway, <laughs> um, yes, they're all... Yes. <laughs> okay. 
Hold on. I don't. <laughs> um. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> okay. Um. All corals belong to the phylum Cnidaria, um, but within that phylum, there are um, there's orders, families. Uh, genera and species so there are variations and different degrees of relatedness um, but the taxonomy is always changing as we um, develop better like technology for um, DNA sequencing and we're finding that a lot of corals are actually more related than we previously thought yeah there so can they cross and they can yes um, Ooh, actually, in some like artificial reefs, they have um, they've created hybrids, um, which were sterile, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, across like the same species, at least ketchup. Yes, um, with other species, uh, I, I, I mean, I suppose that's kind of how new species arise, like right? Yeah. they are usually reproductive barriers. And when they when we have different genuses, but between genuses, at least in shallow water corals, we've seen hybrids appear in the wild. That's so cool. Yeah. Are they sterile? Do you know? They they are sterile. Oh. Yeah, yeah. usually sure. between the acropoids, it happens a lot. Nidaria is probably one of the most killer spelling B words you could get. <laughs> Silent C. Are you Silent kidding me? Silent C. I meant more swing. Paula, talk more about your. I guess I your Adelante. coral restoration project. The coral it's restoration. so cool. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Um, <laughs> so in Puerto Rico, we have coral restoration efforts. We greatly depend on coral reefs for our economy, and especially when, when it's hurricane season and we have these big swells coming up, they can stop up to 80% of, um, of the swell that's coming onto the coast. So they're very important. And yeah, they have a lot of threads, so we've been restoring them for the past 20 years. And Wow, 20 years. Yeah, we're the oldest uh, current nursery in the Caribbean. That's nice. amazing. Yeah. That's cool. And yeah, what else? So usually we have these coral nurseries, and they are made of PVC uh, plastic pipes uh, floating in the bottom of the ocean, and we like a Christmas tree, we hang the corals there like they would be Christmas ornaments <laughs> until they grow at least 15 centimeters. That's the growth size. Oh, we have a lot of chrysogorgids right Ooh. here. Metallogorgia, um, Magnus Peralis, um, uh, Chrysogorgia chiniculata. And can we zoom on this coral, please? Oh, we're kind of at like a really steep interface. Rock do you of think life. that's, that has anything to do with anything? Yeah, and I think it has this? a lot to do with everything. Wow, funny how that works. Um, oh, that's interesting. Do you think there's a lot of flow, or is it just like um, bamboo? Eh. Is it, it's a it's a weird shape. I think we're looking down on it, though. Is it internodal? True. No, I think it's nodal. Nodal. Kind of sounds like noodle. Nodal. I'm just looking right. Oh here. yeah. Yep. Nodal. Uh, I feel like everything is keratoicidinae. Yeah. Keratoicidinae, noodle. Noodle. I'm going to start saying noodle. You'll know what I mean. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> ah. Oh. That's brighter and lighter. Ooh. Oh, still cam. That? Looks really great right here. What is what? Okay. No, that purple that leafy right there. Oh, crinoid. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Unstocked crinoid. It's really hanging on there. Bridge nav. 
Oh, the yellow thing was another stock. Let's do three around. zero meters, zero nine five, please. But this thing. What is that? Can we also get a zoom on that one right there? I think that's a zoanthid covered. Please, thank you. Something. Zero nine five, ROV. Zoom in. Um, I think not all of the chrysogorgids are. Um, is this Was the? This is the. Um, oh. Is that that black coral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there something on oh, it? Oh, was it a, is that a lobster? <laughs> Crab? Oh, still can. Still can a clock. <laughs> yeah, black coral with a squat lobster on it. Yeah. Um, one moment. I literally sampled this. I will find you. It's the one that looks like Chrysogorgia. Or no, Plexoroid. Aha. It's not Bathypathies. It is Doropathies. Doropathies. S T A U R O. Ooh. Wait, I'm second guessing my Chrysogorgia ID. This looks so much like it. Okay, we'll anyway. See another one. Yeah. Look at my corals. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks like the Keratocidiae. Yeah. Hold your drawing up to the camera, Jules. Where's the camera? Oh. Right in front of you. <laughs> I feel like we should hold up the... There we go. Oh, <laughs> Where's TJ's self-portrait? <laughs> All right, I think everyone needs to see this. Changed that one. Yeah. The camera. Ah, oh, it's too oh, dark. Here, here, let's go back to go back to your chair. <laughs> oh, oh, right no. there, right there. Come, come. No, it's back. <laughs> you gotta at least show some of the other art too. <laughs> TJ's self-portrait. <laughs> the auctions the to here. come. Yeah, where this is the. I think we went kind of along the edge of the slope, and now we're oh, back wow. up to the top of the knoll. So I worked uh, worked for a company uh, a few years back. Uh, Called Disney. He was an animator. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? And, uh, no. we had, really? We actually had an auction uh, on board too. for uh, art that crew made up. Oh, wow. TJ, and, can uh, you can you turn your volume up? I can hear him. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, I can't. Okay, on I'll turn my volume up. He had a, they had an auction for... Yeah, we, auction, we auctioned made. off uh, various things that <laughs> the crew made, whatever it was, sketches or so on. Wow. <laughs> for, uh, yeah, for an uh, orphanage in, in uh, Malaysia. We were working in the region. Wow, that's awesome. Nice. Did you submit some art? Uh, <laughs> 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 metal art, <laughs> metal work. Nice. Oh. Okay. We all have different skills. Ooh. What's that? Yeah, we we ended up making uh, making quite a quite a bit out of it. Are you waiting until we have five minutes to get your rock sample? <laughs> yeah, if you want to sit down, oh we can no. we can pick up one of these rocks. <laughs> we can do it. Yeah, this next watch isn't gonna have much to do. It needs to be a small rock sample. Do you actually want to get a rock right now? Yeah. <laughs> well, really? the ship move just ended, so. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What do I like? 
Rocks. Rocks. Yeah, what kind of rock are you looking for? Uh, small. Small. Uh, kind of like one of those. That's a fun shape. Can I be there when you cut into it? You can cut into it yourself. <gasps> Whoa. Oh. Yes. Time to see which rock is willing to join us. <laughs> these look pretty. Yeah, these are. Loose. I'm going to reset the DVL while we're here. See what the still cam looks like. Oh. Epic. Grabbing your fancy. Yeah, is that too far away right there, that one? This one? No, right above it. That one? No. No, okay, I'm happy with that one. Which, oh. Yeah, what, that you were on just a second ago? This one. Yeah. Can you zoom in a bit, Dave? That's probably... Looks nailed down. Oh, that's nailed down. All yeah. right. Uh, what about that one? That one the other one? That right one. on top. I think that's nailed it down. No. Nope. Oh. oh, there oh. we go. Any of those appeal? Uh, the one the yeah. one on the left is looks a little better to me. Kind of volunteer. Off. Ooh, awesome. Can we give it a spin real quick? <laughs> We're going in the front or starboard? <laughs> awesome, thank you. Starboard. Like, yeah, everything's starboard on this thing. You got A and D, so the front small box and the aft okay, small box. Drop over the sam sample. Yeah. This will be sample 071. Thank you. And thank you to the rock for <laughs> being willing to yes. share its knowledge with us. <laughs> rock wisdom. Thank you for your sacrifice. Chris Agorja right in the sample view. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Try coming over. Cool. So we're at A or B was the deal? A or D. Get out of the way. Get <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not B, not no, no, B. No. Not B. A or D as in dog. D as in dog. Either the front or the aft. Calm yeah. down. Don't laugh at that one. Is that D? Yep. Okay. Adam, we have a question for you. What would be the most exciting kind of rock to find down here, you think? Oh, it would definitely be 
a volcanic rock containing a xenolith, which is a fragment of the Earth's mantle that gets carried up by the magma. Oh. And you can learn a ton about the interior of the Earth from finding those. Are, are those rare to find? Yeah. Xeno means foreign and lith means rock. So it's a foreign rock in the other rock. Has it been found before? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Anything else we want to look at here? We're only a couple minutes before the next watch is going to come in, so I don't think it makes sense to make another move. No. We'll, no. Let, them, we'll let them ascend cool. to the peak there, probably. Great. to show us, Jules? Um, <laughs> we have a whole gallery wall. No, but if uh, you give me a suggestion, I can do something on the spot. Oh my goodness. Bamboo yeah. skeleton. Your quest. Bamboo skeleton, uh, I can't do that. Why? I mean, I can also give you one from <laughs> the, uh, the gallery wall, Jules. Yeah, give me a gallery one. Oh, I'm Adam's got something. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, give me the best one from the gallery. Okay. So, do we have anything we want to zoom in on here in real life? Not post-it note life? Um, oh, post-it note life? No, no, no. In real life. Oh, Is there anything uh, we're going to zoom in? <laughs> From the RV right there. Uh, that's Christ of origin. Lots of Christ of origins right here. Want to zoom in, Dave? Ooh, what is that? Okay, Cursa Gorgia Janiculata. Cool. Oh, and if you could hold it for a sec for the still cam. Actually, would you mind um, centering a, a Cursa Gorgia for the still cam, if that's possible? EJ, can you uh, switch over? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, I have. Here we are. <laughs> Very good. That's yeah. a good one, yeah, actually. That that's really good. <clears throat> Greetings. Mm -hmm. Are we good on that shot, or you need more close up? Um, I think we need a little more. A little more would be great. Uh, Tuniculata, I think. Yep. That's great right there. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, hand over starting. For once, we're handing over a really nice, uh, <laughs> really nice dive <laughs> setup for the next watch. <laughs> Looks like we might have an interaction.
coral. What's that uh, orangish stuff? I or, don't know. They were talking Those about jelly hydrozoans things. earlier. Yeah, is that what probably that is? hydrozoa. Um, and I think, Dwight, are you able to pull up the chat hey, by any chance? I don't know if you I'm have not, the right computer. No, Loopy has okay. it. Um, okay. Unfortunately, and then mine doesn't work. Loopy, if we get I'll any input, again. but I think Steve is not on, so it's okay. But No, he, his last really comment cool. was he had to sign off. Okay, no problem. But it's really cool. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for the Zoom. Yep. Nice. Full wide or? There we go. There's a pretty big alive one back here, it looks like, but um, yeah. is, is Argus yeah. going in the other direction? Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. All right, yeah, I'll take a quick look and we can get out of here. I'll do what I can. It's going to be like fully stretched out, I think. It's all right. Another. Yeah, maybe try to do a quick zoom and from Noah. still capture on it and then get out of here. Yeah. Hey, video. Oh, that's a nice one. We, um, yeah. Zoom out. For yeah, that's we really need to change these settings, though, on the camera. Yeah, we're planning to do that <laughs> in between dives. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Go ahead and zoom. Ooh. Pretty. So awesome. what's the scientific name for this coral, do we know? Um, it's a bamboo based on the polyp structure. Um, specific name, I don't know. Probably part of Keratosinidae. Um, definitely bamboo, though. Great zoom. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, full wide. So what about the uh, orientation of those polyps that uh, is like a oh, yeah. key indicator of it being a bamboo? Um, so, I mean, generally, this is not scientific at all, but generally what I look for when I look for bamboo versus like primnoid, primnoids kind of have polyps that are like facing upwards, whereas bamboo have like, you know, ones that are sticking out. Um, bamboo, well, they both kind of look like those... What are they? Like those scrubby bristle things to me, but it's mainly that like orientation of the polyps is what I look for. Yeah, I remember uh, Lila saying there's something about where it kind of branches off, where it's like at the base or something a little farther yeah. up the stalk. Mm -hmm. That can also be a factor. Um, so that's looking at whether they're nodal, nodal internodal, or unbranched, I believe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, lots of lots of stuff taking over dead skeletons for I'm assuming current flow, which is pretty neat. Is the ship still moving? Well, it looks like uh, we, we're almost at the summit of this guy. Yep. Uh, maybe a little farther to your right. If you can get up there. Not much on the sonar anymore. Nope. That's it. This is it now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Tough dive. <laughs> yeah, you'd think the summit of this feature would have uh, yeah. more going on. But it is equally cool to see a whole lot of nothing. There's a little, <laughs> look, there's one, there's a coral right on the top. <laughs> uh, King yeah. of the mountain. King of the hill. <laughs> All right. Yep. right, that's a big one too. We'll spend the next three hours looking at this one. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the star of the ship. <laughs> Time to plant our flag. Mm -hmm. 
Looks like this coral's the king of the hill. Well, this is pretty good timing because we can uh, take a look at this and then another yeah. quick look around the backside maybe and start our recovery process. Yeah. 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 Can Ooh. I see the stills cam in instead of the pilot camera, Sarah? I don't know. Do you know which one is on? Yeah, I'll get you. All right, Amber. Get Amber got it. See if I can get you a decent still shot. Yeah, definitely another bamboo. Which is mainly what we've been seeing this whole time. Not a lot of... I mean, there might be diversity within this family. Well, some, and something's killing Ooh. it off here. Actually, can we get a zoom on that if you're able? Yeah, I'm trying to line your or stills camera up and then I'll move the oh. Zeus. Oh my gosh, thank you. Didn't even realize, <laughs> clearly. Let's see. Uh, Ooh. Okay, go ahead and zoom. Yeah, yeah we it's good enough picture. Oh, so That's yeah. That's a really nice one. Yeah, look at those polyps. Ooh. Really pretty. Um, nice. This is a bamboo. Correct, correct. This one's just super densely polyped. Sure oh. is. Looks really nice. This one's healthy. Yeah, this one's doing really well. <laughs> I'm not sure about expected. its cousins. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Awesome. I think we're good here. Yeah, Thank that's you. Nice. Okay. Yeah, we got a bunch of good pictures. Or at least good enough. Yeah. Oh, it looks like the brittle stars are waving by to us. What's this over here? Uh, yeah. Let's see. See cucumber? Maybe. It's on the rocks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh it might be a star, actually, a sea oh, yeah. star. Yeah, there's two of them, huh? Valvetita. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Huh. The puffy stars. Okay, go ahead and zoom. Wow, it looks like there's something black in the left there, too. Yeah, maybe an urchin. Yeah. Wow. Almost looks like a That's shadow. a really puffy one. Really puffy. Looks like a, a liver, <laughs> almost. Kind of looks like a. Um, <laughs> It's like a, like a gusher. Passed out head first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it looks like a chicken. What is it? It looks this? like an organ. It's a. Um, yeah. Uh, I think a it's a Valva tita. Oh. Mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. yeah. Actually. Yeah. Man, there's a hole. Yeah. We have a good zoom here, though. Thank you. Okay. And then, yeah, I think there's just an and urchin the to other, the left the of urchin, it. Yeah. yeah, take a look at the urchin. Yeah. Okay. So dark. <laughs> yeah. Wow. A deep black urchin. It's cool. Oh, that's actually, one. Loopy, that was actually likely a velatita. Sorry about that. Um, lightly, uh, oh gosh. Okay, so if you, or do you have the guide up? Yep. All right, I think that's good, guys. Uh, right. 20 past, that gives oh, us uh, an hour and 40 minutes. Kind of looks like a hymenas. Is that about or? right? So if you At go seven, to If you do 17 or 18. You should be able to do that. Go yep. to um, mm -hmm. Velatita. Yep. I definitely just added quick in. Let's yeah. rise up go. five meters and we'll pull a last, a final Niskin. Um, actually, back so it's the team. other one. Sorry, go back. And then the one, yep, that one. And then any of the puffy ones, it's that one. So who here enjoys liver and onions? Liver and onions, where did this come from? That's what that reminds me of, just oh. <laughs> liver sitting on the or ocean floor. A disembodied organ.
Yep, you got it, Loopy. Got it. Yeah. Really cool to see their central disc like that, though. But, um, yeah. Not much visible up here. I would suspect that there's some more stalked tunicates like we saw earlier, but they're really small, so. Hmm? Looks like two through six are oh, available. Yeah. Sorry. Two through six. Misking Zebel. This is sample number 73, right? No, this will be sample number 72. Oh, awesome, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, which am I um, You can do two through six, whichever one. Um, so yeah. You can go for two if you want. This altitude's fine if you, yeah. These almost look like the uh, balls that they use for the lottery. Got two. Power ball. Yeah, power ball. Take your muted. Uh, All right, we can set up for ascent if you guys are ready. Hey, Dwight, I'm off the radio, but the, there's a couple of rocks on the course they want ditched. Yeah, if you want to get rid of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what what's the I I'll probably still make eighteen meters a minute. Want your rocks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pretty light. Okay. I'm just going to try and come on with it all. Nah. This whole thing is operating off a of Raspberry Pi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the radio on. That was a nice. Okay. And we are pretty much oriented. Okay, come out on, come out a little wide on that.
That's what I'm saying. I think they switched around the computer, so now you're able to use chat. Okay, Normal. start coming up. Sarah, maybe, I don't know, I'll try for let's go 15 meters a minute for, for a second. Normally, I have my laptop here with chat, but I knew that we were coming up soon, so I was like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday, Saturday <night. laughs> yeah, that Friday night was wow, crazy last night. <laughs> no, well, I mean, it was just so desolate that we're all like, kind of, <laughs> yeah, we're like cracking jokes grasping and for and straws. <laughs> yeah. Someone said that we're much more fun at night, so hey. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. The jokes kind of roll off better. I'm not sure. I feel like I'm just like halfway there with whatever we're looking at. Like, sure, that's a sea cucumber. It looks like a regular cucumber to me. <laughs> but maybe I'm also just hungry. Okay, you can do <laughs> 20 meters per minute. Now we get blue skies or blue waters. Apparently, the other s the other watch saw a whale. Can Did someone they? confirm this? Because no one said this to me, and I feel like this is very big news if they saw a whale. They yeah. found a whale bone. Oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's what we yeah, have. Yeah, that's what we have is a yeah. whale bone oh, fossil. That's still a big deal. That's still a huge deal, yeah. Yeah, really and cool. that was like the next sample, so they had to have found that like when we got off. I thought <laughs> I saw something that looked stick-like, but we didn't do a zoom, so. Yeah. But it's cool that someone else found something. Yeah, they found it like maybe, looking at the time, maybe two hours after. Okay. Wow. We had just awesome. gotten off. I wonder if it has anything on it. Yep. Sounds better than that beer can we found. Man, the PBR. PBR. <laughs> yeah, we found a PBR. <laughs> oh, you're fine. We found a PBR. Yeah. And what is yes. a PBR? Um, like a beer. Yeah. It's like yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know that, but oh. Yeah, yeah. oh, oh, seriously, there was a can. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Really? I was yeah, like, was I was like, can. what's shining over there? <laughs> How old did it look? Kind of fresh here. Well, it's kind of newish. Shiny. It was shiny. Newish, oldish. Somebody might have thought it was like from the 60s or 70s, but it also looked like it was more recent. I thought it looked pretty newish. <laughs> it looked like it just got dumped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it did look kind of fresh. But oh, I thought you were making up a new acronym for some, no. some kind of creature. No, <laughs> no, I literally <laughs> meant no. a beer can. We got pictures of it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Well, that's. We haven't seen a lot of trash, thankfully. Yeah. Thankfully. That is good. I mean, how, I mean, I would really hope not in this area. Yeah, exactly. But hey. It's kind of surprising that thing yeah. was there. It was so, like, nicely, like, positioned, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we could, just panned see, over like, and straight it came on the into label. view. Yeah, uh, you can see the logo and everything. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm going to. Advertisement. It's like the worst kind of advertisement to bomb into see. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, lesson of the day, folks back at home, leave no trace. Don't throw your trash in the ocean. Very true. Yes. Oh, we found well, so many things over the years. Refrigerators, oh. washing <laughs> machines. Oh no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's horrible. Well, you know, uh, it used to be legal to dump your garbage in the ocean, like cruise ships and container ships. Man. Uh, th and this, when I first started going to sea, like 20, 25 years ago, it, they would dump them. You know, if you were outside the zone in international get waters, you could just get Jeez. rid of your trash. Yeah, yeah. It was legal. Sad. So did it become international law to not do that anymore? Yeah, the maritime industry somehow got together on it. I, I don't know what exactly happened, if it became part of the law law of the sea or not. Or the, uh, I forget exactly. No, no, we're, we're uh, playing with the slurp.
<laughs> Back row, I can't remember from last night with the sponge. Did we see it go up the hose? Um, we did. We did. But it, we didn't see it go into the container. No, but yeah. it went beyond the snozzle, right? Did, it, did we see it go up the yellow hose? I oh. was logging, so I wasn't. You know, it could shit, be in the plastic. Or see, the that's seventy percent. Now it's gone. I thought it looks like it went up the hose. I was say, yeah. Yeah, me I, too. A lot of people thought it did go up. I honestly was not paying attention. <laughs> Going now. So, after this dive, the next one we have planned is around 9 a.m. tomorrow, correct? Yeah, that's the current plan. Uh, we're going to move. We, we've done um, three dives now on this very large unexplored seamount. So we're done here. So it's time to move to the next area, which is, oh, I don't know, uh, 100 miles away or so. Are we getting closer to Palmyra? Or are we going to uh, further go away, away, actually? Oh, okay. Farther away. What um, about uh, Kingman? Also farther away? Farther away, yeah. Cool. Yeah, the, we, we all up there. Sites four and five are um, some of the more northerly sites for okay. this expedition. So, um, and the weather seems to, um, it, well, it's really good. The forecast is really pretty good, but um, <laughs> we know how that went. Over, over time, it te the weather seems to be better to the south. So mm. we're going to try to get this norther northerly stuff out of the way. Got it. Over the next couple of days while the weather's good. And uh, it's a pretty large unmapped feature, so we have to do some mapping on it before we can dive the ROVs. Sarah, can you slow the winch down to uh, 18? So we'll get up that way sometime in around midnight, maybe, and then do some mapping grids over the over this new seamount. That's the flush. And uh, pick a dive site in the morning. Hopefully early, 6, 7 a.m., we'll pick the dive site and then uh, be ready to dive at 9. Right. Makes sense. Some folks in the chat were seeing that the um, feed in satellite 3 is a little bright. You think we could turn that down? Hey, Chris. How are you? Ah, I see. Okay, I understand. <laughs> I was tempted to, huh? Yeah, the next two dives will be deep. The the seamount feature is deeper than um, where we can bring the laser dive bot, so mm. we won't be using that for the next couple dives. But after that, we'll put it back on. And do nice. some shallow ones. Hmm? Nice. It might, yeah. Uh, there you go. So, what we'll be looking for on later dives with the laser dive bot now that it's uh, fully commissioned. Yeah. Well, it's it's a tool that uh, will be used opportunistically if we see um, it's different rock formations. You know, we can uh, collect data from from that and then compare oh, it to up. samples that we collect. So it's still kind of experimental, but we're trying to use it for science at this point and uh, you know understand the there. geochemistry of these rock. <laughs> These these basalts, and then we can uh, give it all. I'll compare that to data we collect in the lab. Nice. 
And can you tell us for the viewers back at home how a Raman spectrometer on this laser dive bot works? Uh, I am certainly no expert, but um, we have uh, Pablo on board who's explained this a couple times, and uh, maybe Daniel, you, <laughs> you could explain it a little better than me, but my understanding is that the um, this gentleman whose last name is Raman uh, won a Nobel Prize back in the early 1900s because he discovered uh, that laser light reflected, um, reflected off uh, objects d with different spectra, different patterns, uh, depending on the um, chemical makeup of the material that they were shooting the laser at. And you can measure that and measure it in the lab for known substances and get um, a spectra that matches what that substance is. And now when we shoot the laser, we can measure, measure the, la uh, the reflections of the laser and correlate that to what the substance is. Interesting. Yeah, I think the analogy Pablo used when he explained it to us was imagining having a tennis ball and bouncing it on different yep, surfaces. Say you bounce a ball on a bed, it won't bounce as high versus something like a right. table, and it'll bounce a lot higher. And those different materials are like the um, different atoms and molecules to make up where we're looking at in the tennis balls and photons we'll bouncing there. back with right. different energies. So, Sorry. yeah. We just needed to see. <laughs> One of the comments asked, um, when we see trash that's small enough, do we pick it up? Uh, in theory, yeah, we can pick up anything. Um, it's not generally something that's in our mission, but uh, occasionally we have um, rem removed <laughs> objects from the seafloor, like trash. I would also say that you might want to pick up trash, but it also might be interesting. Like if it's not super detrimental looking, yeah. it might be interesting to leave it. And then maybe if you wanted to, you could note where it is and then come back in a couple of years. Because there are instances of mm -hmm. things actually using trash for um, habitat and right. colonization. Yeah, that's true. Yep. And I mean, there's going to be trash in the ocean for, it's just inevitable. So if we kind of know where some things are, it might be cool to um, see how it changes if people are interested in that in the future. Yeah. Yep. And that's a big example of that are uh, shipwrecks. Yeah. Like when sometimes we sink them on purpose, not just to throw trash in the ocean, but because <coughs> they eventually become habitats Yeah. Uh, on a expedition with Nautilus a few years ago they visited the USS Independence an aircraft carrier sunk off the coast of California and when they came back a couple of decades later they found that it became an entire ecosystem in and of itself host to large sponges crabs all sorts of fishes and jellies so yeah sometimes sometimes but not all the time what we put in the oceans can be beneficial but Still rule of thumb, let's not go to the ocean. Right. Ooh. A it's a ghost. floating crinoid or oh, a midwater um, creature? Yeah, probably. Say maybe? Mm. Was it a crinoid? Looked a bit too radial to be. It must have been a jelly. Because I saw tentacles or something. I don't think crinoid would be this far up. No, that would be too far. That right. would be kind of wild. <laughs> but it did look but radio, like you said. Looked <laughs> jelly. Yeah. So. Maybe it could have been a sea cucumber. Huh. I'll have to look at those when my screen changes. Probably 100 meters off the bottom is, or 200 at this point, is uh, too a far off for a sea cucumber. It's a know. possibility. I know some of them can be um, more swimming long ways. Swimmy, yeah, than 
slidey. These screensavers are very interesting. I know, it's so pretty, right? Are these also squat lobsters or a different crab or something? Yeah, these are squat lobsters. Um, and someone pointed out the other night a fact that I forgot. Squat lobsters are called squat lobsters because their tails are kind of like tucked in like right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're so cool though. It's strange. They look like crabs, but you kind of tell in the front that it looks more like a lobster. Yeah. Either I mean, way. they are in the same, you know, general. They are yeah, they arthropods are crustaceans. and they are crustaceans. Yeah, I was looking at something a while ago that said that many times throughout the history of like crustaceans that whether a species diverged and it was looking completely different from say like a uh, common ancestor crab and turns into mm -hmm. a lobster, eventually down the road it turns back into looking like a crab mm. because it seems to be a More very... Evolutionarily efficient yep so it's an interesting form oh. it's interesting how evolution works that way yeah that's cool Yeah, we are just ascending now after, um, how long was this dive? We de we started descending at like 9.15, I want to say. So I guess it's been like 15 hours-ish. Cut the dive a bit short just because there's not a lot there. <laughs> um, we kind of saw everything that was there like we might have some more floaty objects. Oh, shrimp. there goes a shrimp. It's always funny to see when those drift by. So here's something I always wondered. What's the difference between shrimp and krill? Um, isn't krill copepods? I could be wrong. Let me see. Uh, no. a great question <laughs> which I feel like I, I knew the answer to let's see maybe the size oh yeah it is okay yeah krill are smaller right Some other stuff too. Different body plans. Yep. So, someone in the uh, IP chat was uh, helping us out and said that squat lobsters are, in fact, actual crabs. And. Oh. Includes a link to a website talking about this.
and they're actually closely related to hermit crabs, in fact. Yeah, right. That makes sense. They're kind of the unshelled hermit crab. So for those of you who are just tuning in, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. We are currently ascending from a dive down to the uh, near the Cayman Reef, which is within the Pacific Kuma Islands Marine National Monument. But we lay just right outside of there within the exclusive economic zone of the U.S. In this area of the ocean is being currently being charted and explored by us. We are ascending from a dive that was planned to be 24 hours, but we felt that we found enough in this area and we're going to move on to another guillot nearby. Next dive should be around 9 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time tomorrow. Daniel, mm -hmm. how do geologists like to relax? Oh no. Uh, that's a good question. Well, how, how do they uh, <laughs> how do they relax? In rocking chairs. <laughs> oh. oh. I knew it had something to do with rocking. <laughs> Thought you were gonna say uh, rock and roll concerts. I'm like, that's stressful <laughs> 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 in a good way. Daniel, do you own a rocking chair? Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're on a rocking chairs right now with the waves kind yeah, of really? moving us. <laughs> I thought of a joke last night in bed, and I wish I wrote it down, but when I remember, I'll make sure to tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what I look forward to every day. <laughs> So I have a little game for everyone, if you're interested. Okay. Have you ever heard of the tale of the immortal snail? No. No. Ah, uh, it's not a story the Jedi would tell you. I'm sorry, that was a bad Star Wars reference. So. <laughs> I don't uh, get it. <laughs> the immortal snail <laughs> is this more of a big thought experiment to see what your answer is. So there's this snail and he is immortal or they're immortal and they grant you immortality for yourself but for all of your existence you have to outrun this snail because this snail is also like indestructible. Imagine you oh. are an immovable object I've heard of this and before. this snail is an unstoppable force. So if, even if you put it in like uh, a s steel box, like three feet thick, welded shut in Fort Knox, and you have like all the United States military like guarding it, eventually, eventually, given all the time ever, it will break out and it will find you. <laughs> and if it touches you, then you die. So what would you do? Would you just uh, live out as long as you can, or would you just let the well, snail touch you and just uh, go well, about your waves? I mean, if this is a if this is a true snail and it's slow, I feel like it'd be pretty easy if you just kept kind of moving around. You know, how fast is this snail? Is yeah. it slow? Oh, he's slow, but he can be fast. Honestly, he you never he know where he's going <laughs> to. You never know where he's going to show up because <laughs> this snail is also incredibly smart. Like. Tony Stark level smart, like oh. you can build an Iron Man suit if it needs to to come okay. and find you. And uh, so, if you were to like be in a zero gravity environment, yeah, it would figure out how to also do that. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd probably just let it touch me, just so I don't have to <laughs> yeah. deal, deal with, deal with the struggle of just like, <laughs> is it gonna touch me? <laughs> like. Catch them and eat them. 
<laughs> hey, that's always an option. Escar go at the end of, you know. Then that solve the, the problem. Yeah, like, what if Become immortal. What if someone else touches of the him? immortal snail that he lives on in your body. <laughs> But yeah, that's always one of my favorites. What if you just like froze him? Oh, he'll thaw out. <laughs> Even like, he'll thaw out. <laughs> like a cryogenesis thing. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Like when it's like really cold? Yeah, cryogenics. Yeah. Yep. Eventually, this snail will come for you. Well, yeah, but if it's like frozen, it can unfreeze. But if it doesn't <laughs> unfreeze in your lifetime, maybe well, it'll just go to your grave. Well, I mean, you're going to be immortal yourself, so eventually, oh. at some point, oh. it's going to thaw out. I Even if, see. like, you teleport to, like, the other side of the universe, this snail is going to get there like before you. Be and friends with Doctor It's going to touch you. Go, yeah. go there. Okay. <laughs> so it's the ultimate game of cat and mouse, hmm. but uh -huh. snail and human. Okay. Yeah, I'd rather just go ahead and touch me and get it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, if I have had a good life, yeah. <laughs> What's your answer? I think <clears throat> I would invent a time machine so that I could live as long as I can, but go to any point in time so that even if the snail catches up to me, I don't have to, like, uh, what am I trying to say? I don't have to wait for it to catch up to me. I can jump through any point in time, and he has so to catch up to where I am. <laughs> I mean, do you watch Doctor Who at all? I used to, but okay. pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm letting my nerd roots out. So to say, I don't want Star Wars or Marvel or DC, so. Where have you references. been living? What? Well, well, I see you with Doctor Who. <laughs> I do see, I have watched Doctor Who though, but that was when I was in like middle school. Yeah, same here. <laughs> um, Honestly, you're, uh, you're probably one of the lucky ones. <sighs> Look, a lot of people are like, what is wrong with you for not watching Star Wars at the bare minimum? But I just, I can't. What about Star Trek? No. <gasps> I feel like that I one mean, also is like. I wear my Trekkie oh my. socks today. Oh, I'm so sorry. Maybe Those are someday. Nice socks. Maybe someday I'll have the attention span for it. But I just like. That's after, fair. After getting into like anime, I just feel like I can't get into those types of plot lines. Yeah, the ones where you really have to commit. Yeah. Do but you watch anime? I do. Well, that's good. I like. Yeah, I love I to hear it. Yeah. I'm just now kind of getting into my anime. Great storylines, great artwork. So what's your favorite one? Any ones about the ocean that um, are your favorite? <laughs> no. <laughs> what was the question? A one Piece, maybe? One Piece, okay, yeah. <laughs> one Piece I have there. yet to watch One Piece. That is Look, on the list. That's a, that is definitely about the ocean. Yeah. Considering they're pirates, but um. Yeah, we <laughs> talked about that the other day. It's just too many episodes. Yep. Um, but for anyone new, we are ascending, and it's and yes, this was a 23, 24 hour dive. I want to say, um, so. but we're coming up early because there was just so we we looked at it all basically. It was <laughs> there wasn't much to look at, so we so just kind of sped sand through. And rocks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, some sort of two two full dives really with an Shall eight we? hour break in between. <laughs> yeah. Unplanned. We did hit some like incredible current last night though when yes. we first started. Yes, it was hard to move. Yeah. And that's I mean, I would assume that's part of the reason why there was nothing there. Because if it's that high of a current that Hercules can't move. Well, we already had that at the top, though, of the the flat top. Kinda, yeah. That kind of subsided as we went down, right? But still, yeah, but um, normally but I guess it, yeah, also it, at the it top gets like that, right? Yeah. yeah. You would expect to see a lot of stuff, but hey. Yep. So how long do we have to till we ascend to the surface? 
63 minutes. Yeah, about 63 okay. minutes. Yep. And for those of you at home, once we get to around 100 to uh, 50 meters, we'll probably be turning off our SPL as we let our ROV pilots ascend and get the RV back on board. So you stick around till then. If you have any questions, you can post them on in the uh, chat on our website. And we have a team of scientists, engineers to help answer your questions here. We also usually see some oceanic white tip sharks. Yes. 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 Descend and descend. yes. There was one outside for like the whole day yesterday and it's yeah. probably still there. We named him Frank. <laughs> I thought it was Francisco. Or yeah. was that something else? He was first named Frank. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we changed his Oriel name. Oriel changed it to Francisco. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Frank Cisco. Oh, Frank for short, you know. <laughs> um, he, he, he's pretty big. <laughs> he's a pretty big one, too. But there was a booby on deck last night. I don't know where it went, though. It was very confused. It kept getting up and flying to a different spot on the deck, like every couple seconds. Oh, one of the... Um, birds. I thought you said a movie. Yeah. I said booby. You heard me right? Yeah. I thought <laughs> I said movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only one though, so. He was just trying to get comfortable. He was. <laughs> he was really confused. Are they? I don't know. That booby sex. But they were, they were really confused by why the land was moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bless you. Here's a question. Can birds get seasick? It also sounds like the start of a joke. <laughs> well, it's not, not a joke. Do birds see. have ear bones? I'm sure they uh, had to worry about flying and all the delicate balancing of maintaining balance in the air. So, I mean, they have ear bones. So, theoretically, I would say yeah. Because... The issue with seasickness is like your inner ear part mm -hmm. or the ear bones, so. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Like motion sickness. Yeah, I'm really hoping we get that sponge sample mm -hmm. that caused us so much trouble. <laughs> Google says that pet birds can get sick in a car. Oh. <laughs> Poor okay. birds. Okay. When did bring... Okay, wait. I know... So, Cheyenne, I know that, like, armed forces cannot have, like, pets on board. <laughs> Is no, that? Coast Guard is for is an armed force. We are not under the Department of Defense. We're under the oh. Department of Homeland Security, which means we can arrest people. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Wait, so how would you classify all of the... I'm so... Like, I always get so confused. How are they all classified? Like, can you say one thing for all of them or no? Yeah, armed forces. Okay. That's the correct term. Okay. Um, yeah, we just... Coast Guard has... Um, I mean, we report to different secretary, though we report to the Navy in times of war. And, um, hmm. yeah, and then Coast Guard just has some exceptions to laws because uh, we are not, we don't have military police, so we don't let the military arrest citizens. Mm. aside from the National Guard in times of emergency, mm. but the National Guard is under the state government, so we don't have like a centralized government military patrolling citizens. Mm. So that's part of our rights. However, the Coast Guard's an exception, but we can only arrest people underwater, and we have <laughs> laws about <laughs> when we can and can't arrest people, so. Right. But you guys can't have pets on board. No, we can't. <laughs> 
Man. Sorry, that was a long explanation. <laughs> no, Do it's interesting. Have pets on board. It's interesting. <laughs> what if it's like a canine unit? Do y'all have those? Um. Oh shoot. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I'm not sure. Well, what's a canine gonna do on the water? Well, it, it would not be on a boat. <laughs> we don't have any animals on yeah. boats. Not even if, like, um, you know, stopping smugglers to see what's on their ship. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> no, no, no animal help, just humans. Huh. I hope people have a good sense of smell then. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that there are Coast Guard units in Arkansas? Why? For real? <laughs> yeah, are there lakes there are. or something? Um, no, it's <laughs> just, no, we have stations on the Mississippi River. Oh. oh. Makes sense. Oh. Yeah. That's right, the Mississippi goes all the way to the Great Lakes, right? And to I'm the Gulf sure. too, right? Where it uh, not directly. There's yeah, a canal, so I think. Yeah, so makes sense oh, for okay. anything coming in and out in the, into potentially international waters. Yeah, so most of that kind of stuff is more for uh, tending buoys. So we take care of all the navigational aids in the United States, which is a lot. So it's important, even in rivers, to take care of our buoys. When I was in Virginia, I was, we worked right, kind of right next to the Naval Weapons Base. I know it's not Coast Guard, but <laughs> I'm always reminded of that. And that, um, they had this big, um, I forget what it's called, but a bridge that opens. <laughs> it goes like upwards and it opens, can't remember what it's called. But there would be these huge boats, huge vessels that would come by and we were like, all right, what's going on today? What are they trying to take from the Naval Weapons Base this time? Yeah, there's um, the Coast Guard Academy is across from a Navy sub base and mm. we see submarines all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a huge submarine one time and it was really cool to see. Submarines are super fun. However, they can be dangerous. I'm on the sailing team, and one time our freshman almost ran into a sub. <gasps> wow. No. Yeah. Was it like, oh, wow. did they know it was underwater? Or? No, I mean, it was above water, and it had the uh, little guard boats. Mm. They, they weren't, like, super close to it, but they were going downwind and to go downwind you have like a big kite sail and they're sailing in some boats that they hadn't sailed in before and they really didn't know how um how to maneuver in the boats and instead of just taking down the sails and turning away they kept trying to maneuver and our coach had to go and tell them to <laughs> rip down the sail and go away uh oh yeah I was in another boat, and we were, we were far away. We were just watching. We were like, ha-ha, they're getting kind of close. And then we are like, oh, uh -oh. shoot, they're getting <laughs> kind of close. <laughs> Those uh, guard boats for the sub are kind of mean. They don't, they, like, have these big guns, and they, like, oh. point them at you oh. as you go by. Um oh very Wait, protective like of the on sub. the vessel yeah so the subs have escorts um and so it used to be coast guard but they didn't think we were cool enough so they switched to navy escorts Whoa. but there i mean there's just security for the submarine but yeah. even if your boat says u.s coast even if your sailing boat says u.s coast guard on it they'll still like They'll turn and point their gun as you pass oh. and like stare at you. Ew, that's so scary. Yeah, oh. I mean, yeah. There's a radio Larian on screen, I think. One of those that we saw before. One of those mine sleepers. Looks like oh, it there's was another on. one. Oh. Or it may have saved one. I don't know. Atalanta's cam. Some jelly too. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah.
bien. We are currently at about 1,100 meters. So still probably a good bit to go, like 50 minutes or so. We're, yeah. at, we're close to 1,000. Yeah. Oh. I see. We're getting there. How often is your screen updating, Sarah? Um, every 10 seconds, but I guess I... Oh, wait, am I looking at the wrong thing? What is this? Yeah, you're looking at the right thing. What? You see on the yeah, right there, the upper tab? Yeah, but... It says 10. 77, and yours says 10.06. Well, you see right up here? You see where it says 10 seconds? Just yeah, click but down. Click one second. Yeah, but it shouldn't be that different. Oh. Um, okay. Not sure why. Oh, oh there, there it goes. Go. I don't know what was wrong with mine. Cool. Okay, I have a joke. Sure. Go for it. How did SpongeBob find his way home? Uh, that's a good question. Whoa. Um, trail of ossicles? I don't know. <laughs> Muscle memory. Ah! Whoa. <laughs> Muscle memory. <laughs> I get it, but also don't. Forgive me. Because <laughs> it's like muscles in the ocean, like the, yeah. the yeah, sea creatures. Why are they called muscles? They're not muscles, they're muscles. I don't know. English. <laughs> yeah, somebody had to come up with it. English has a lot of really oddly written things compared to other languages that like just don't make sense when you read them. That's true. Like in words like fight or flight and you have the G-H, like you don't even say that. It's not well, fly good. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yep. <sighs> okay, here's another one. Why do people love SpongeBob so much? Love. Um. Because he's a uh, best friend with Patrick. No, he's a very wholesome guy. Ah. Uh, he's a very what? He's got a lot wholesome. of holes. <laughs> <laughs> I um. like that one. <laughs> awesome. That's a good one. <laughs> I think, Dwight, that might be mine. Sorry. Mm hmm. <laughs> So when we make our ascents, we have to travel at a certain speed. Are we traveling relatively fast or slow? And why is that? Does anybody know? Um, we make our ascents at the as fast as Hercules can go. So when, when we go up, we can do about a typically like a maximum of 20 meters per minute. Does your chair have a cushion in it? No, um, this is from in there. And that's Hercules mm -hmm. usually has samples and things like that. And when we go down, uh, the, the maximum though. safe speed on normal operating speed on the winch up or down is 30 meters per minute. So when we go down, Hercules can beat that. So we go down at close to 30 meters per minute. When we come up, we come up as fast as Hercules can go, which typically is between 15 and 20 meters per minute. And that's just because of that's the amount of thrust we have against the amount of the weight or the, the footprint in the water. Oh, thanks for that question.
So for those of you who are curious about what we do with our samples when we get back to shore or get back on our boat. So Hercules is has taken samples of different kinds, ranging from ones we rock samples, biolog sam biological samples, we place in boxes, and others we even attempted to slurp up with our slurp tube, and others that we just uh, took a bottle and we capped it. And all these different samples will be processed in our wet lab aboard. And this involves taking out our boxes and draining water. But first and foremost, wearing a proper personal protection equipment, or PPE. And when we do this, we're really looking at protecting ourselves from any potential, say, sting cells on an anemone or any small fibrous pieces of an animal that may be uh, lodged into our skin. We would not like that. So we always wear gloves and to make sure that we have the proper closed-toed shoes while we're working in lab. And yeah, uh, Sarah, since you're back, can you tell us about how we, uh, what it's like processing our samples in a wet lab? Yeah, um, Lupi can also talk on this if she wants, but basically the process is we take the samples off the boat, I mean off the ROV, we take it off Herc when he comes up, and then we start with the bio samples, so anything that was alive we work with first, um, we measure them, we take a picture with the sample ID, and then we put them in tubes, um, usually. Um, or if they're really big, we put them in a bag. Um, and then we preserve them in usually 95% ethanol. And then we put them in the fridge, even though they're in ethanol. Um, and yeah, that's how we, we make different sample IDs for where they're going, whether it's a subsample, um, what, the, what it's pres preserved in, what cruise it is, etc. And yeah, for rocks, we kind of just measure, take a picture, and that's it. <laughs> um, it's a pretty, pretty solid process, not really much different each time, because we don't do any of the genetic testing or anything. Um, we just preserve them so others can look at them. Yep, pretty much. Um, for Niskin samples, I will say we um, we put them through like a machine. Like we pour it into like a machine to where it like um, absorbs the water out of it. Um, yeah. Yes. That's, that's my favorite doing Niskin samples. Yep. Mm. Um, if y'all would like to watch. Um, we should be live streaming that when we're in the lab, so you can see me and Sarah in the lab. Mm -hmm. Yep. To see how the process goes. Or yeah, it's also it's an all hands kind of thing. Whoever wants yes. to do it can do it. So yes. um, if there's already people there, it might not necessarily be us, but yeah, yeah, you can watch regardless. Yep. Depending on uh, who's available and who gets to help, or yeah, so we have people who are working on taking those samples and putting them in uh, cold storage, but we also have people who are taking our geological samples and uh, breaking them open. That's one of the fun parts. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a rock saw on our back deck that we use to s make slices of uh, any rocks that we find. What are there any bitty uh, small pebbles all the way up to giant, well, maybe not giant, but basketball-sized boulders almost. We will have a saw that can cut right through them just like butter. <laughs> That's one way of saying it. It's always fun to split it open and then look at what's inside. It's almost like a nice polished surface. And Thank you can you. see all these fine details that can tell us a lot about the chemical makeup of the rock, the how the rock formed, mm. and how old it is. Mm. I believe our geological samples are stored at are they stored at URI, University of Rhode Island, or is it the uh, yeah. Harvard uh, it's, um, repository? Shoot, I don't remember the... The rock samples? Yeah, yeah I know it's URI. At, um, URI. And there's, isn't there one more? 
MGSL. I don't remember what that stands for, though. Let's see if it comes up. I think no. it's like a museum. Yeah. Um, but yeah, normally these are just going back to um, either URI or Harvard. The bio samples go to Harvard. The comparative zoology. Um, yeah, Museum of Comparative Zoology for Harvard. But yeah, if you're wondering why I was moving around, it's because I wanted a chair with arms. <laughs> so I thought it was my time to switch it out. Fair enough. So we are about 792 meters until the uh, ocean surface. So still have time to rein in your questions, and we're here to answer them. Roughly 40 minutes. So some of you have already uh, placed your questions in the chat. So how much can one of the robotic arms lift? They look like they lift a lot, given the kind of boulders we've been bringing back. <laughs> I might be busy see. or something. I might be able to look this up in case anybody's too busy. Nice. With fish. So, our manipular arms oh, on maybe Hercules. A squid. The robotic arms aboard Hercules can lift from 200 to 300 pounds. And for those of you who are wondering how much that is in metric units. That is about 136 kilograms. So, quite a lot. Could definitely take me on in an uh, arm wrestling contest. <laughs> so, has the ROV ever been attacked by an animal? So, our ROVs, as far as I'm concerned, have not been attacked by animals, but they have had close encounters. If you have uh, been looking at our dive, the past few dives, you've seen many sorts of animals like these different siphonophores drifting very close by. And we even had some eels get up close to some of our PVC pipes and uh, other tools to take samples. Uh, a crinoid, a swimming crinoid got really close to us and what else did we see that we had a close encounter with? Do you remember? Um, well, there's been times where there have been like, you know, whales, squid, octopi, um, what else? Yeah, really anything mobile we could have interactions with, but generally creatures don't like, if they're coming close to the ROV, it's because they're trying to run away and they're scared and they're just going the wrong way. Or they're just like investigating, like, uh, you know, like a shark or a whale or something with that level of intelligence, basically. Um, but nothing is ever hostile, really, I would say. Oh, oh sea oh, cucumber. Oh, wait, that's, yeah, a, that's a sea cucumber. A, that's, might not be, that might be. Um, wow, that happened so on. fast. <laughs> I don't think that was a sea cucumber. 
I want to say it was a cephalopod. Oh, what? Actually, it could have been. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not it, sure it kind of looked like it from that picture. I don't want to get our hopes up, but it kind of looked like a piglet squib. Because I, I thought I saw some ink go by. <laughs> yeah, I agreed. It looked a little more what you said. <laughs> we saw a cephalopod. Nice. Huh. I think they saw one on the last uh, dive. It's already up on our YouTube channel, the clip of it. Yeah. Our, we, this watch saw a cephalopod. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's really our cool. cephalopod. Yes. Um, squid. Yep. So, another question we have is, uh, how are Hercules and Atalanta different? So, they play very similar, but in different roles. So, Hercules is our main dive instrument that has more of the instruments aboard, say, the manipulator robotic arms, the sample tubes and boxes, uh, all the sensors and equipment that help us understand what's at the deep ocean, and it's able to be modified to have additional instruments like the laser dive bot. Whereas Atalanta is a little more simplified, but the role there is also critical. So Atalanta mainly has ballasts, thrusters, and a camera on board to look at Hercules down below. So the instruments there are a little simpler, but Atlanta sits right above Hercules to serve as a a middle point between Hercules and the Nautilus. So Atlanta will take a lot of the motion from the ship, say the back of the ship is rocking up on a wave and kind of yanks on the tether. Uh, Atlanta will take that force instead of Hercules and that will keep Hercules from being yanked up out of the ocean while it's looking down at a really cool uh, squid, for example. So, yeah, we have Anlan to be more of a middleman for Hercules in Nautilus. And in terms of uh, close encounters, once again, uh, on previous expeditions. Ooh, look at that, Sarah. Oh. Oh, what's that? Um. Um, a jelly. I didn't see most Something of it. Something squishy. <laughs> yeah, a squishy. Looked, looked, looked like I'm a squishy. sorry. I was looking at more reference photos of piglet mm -hmm. squids, or yes, reindeer squids. Mm -hmm. I believe that was a piglet squid that floated by. Not the one that we just saw, but um, a bit ago, the pink thing. I don't know what just floated by. Every time I see like a little jelly and then someone says like you're squishy, it reminds me of Dory when she was like, a squishy. I shall name you Squishy. <laughs> <laughs> and then it stung her and she was like, bad Squishy, bad. It really is just a Squishy when we're ascending or descending because <laughs> usually I can't get a good enough look at it. I mean, it's kind of like if you can see tentacles, then it's clearly like a, you know, a jellyfish, like a Skyphozoan. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard. We're moving. But good eye. So yeah, we've uh, that was a pretty nice close encounter. We've also had some with uh, sperm whales before. So they were attracted to our ROV because of um, the sonar technology that we use to make sure we don't run into a seamount. And this whale must have picked up on that uh, sound going through the ocean, as they are sensitive to ocean sounds and use echolocation to help find their uh, other mates throughout the ocean. And so. You can see a clip of this on our YouTube channel or on our website. And yeah, we Ooh. sometimes come across creatures that are very much curious about us. They like Something to- Something in Atalanta, Cam. Huh, looks like a ring of some kind, maybe.